As always, we will start with a recap of what we talked about previously. So we had our definitions of marketing. Again, you can come back and take a look at these. Um, the one I like, putting the right product in the right place, at the right price, at the right time. That sums up the things that we're going to talk about the most. We continue to talk about marketing mix. Uh, it's a combination of factors. Um, again, the people you're trying to go after specifically is your target market. We talked about the four P's. You need to know the four P's. Price, product, place, and promotion. Don't really care what order you say them in. And again, they're going to have to be adjusted. Um, they, they are dependent and independent. All right. You have to adjust it until the right combination is found. So you have to work together. Um, you can adjust one at a time, which makes them the independent thing about it, because you can adjust one at a time. However, once you change one, it's going to affect the other ones. So that's where it's very dependent. All right. So each one is dependent on the other three for what's going to go on and how it's going to work. Um, Got to be careful about how you're going to look at it. The marketing mix elements are interrelated. A change to one element affects the others. Again, we have our little wheel diagram here. Some circles, you can see everything is connected. These pieces make one big, the marketing mix. These blend together to make a marketing mix. Spoke on why it's important, like I just did. Spoke about needs, wants, and demands. Remember, there are four things you need to survive. A roof over your head, enough food and water to maintain your health, basic health care and hygiene, and clothing, right? Nike is not a need. All right, we talk about wants. Those are the things that we, I want to have that. I don't need it, but I want to have it, all right? Usually these are items that are shaped by, talk about society, culture is a big aspect of it, social media impacts what we should want, okay? They try and tell us. We talk about a need, want scenario, and we're going to talk about a need, want demand scenario also, but need, want, demand scenario. I need food. I want McDonald's. I need food. I want Nike. The next one we talked about was our demands. So demands, once back by buying power. So the thing I'll ask a couple of times, you got to have the financial ability to make demands. You got to have the money to pay for it. So I need food. I want mcdonald's i demand a big mac with no pickles and no mustard because I, I don't like pickles or mustard all right that's the need want demand scenario all right demand can be and is usually very very specific all right big mac is more specific than saying i want mcdonald's uh, we talked about selling these you can go back to my other presentation to to refresh those opportunity cost the loss you're going to give for getting something else what you're going to give up which brings us to today. We're loading. Should have put it on pause. All right. So product life cycle refers to the stages a product moves through from the time it is introduced to the market until the time it is taken off the market. So this can be long for a lot of products. We have a lot of products that have been around for a very, very, very long time. And other products don't last quite as long. So their life cycle is a lot shorter. But they all go through very similar stages. Then our four stages. Introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. And you can think of this like a curve. As introduction, we're just getting started. Growth, we are growing. When you grow, you move up. Maturity, is when you mature, you start to level off, and then decline, decline, you're going down. So those are all four stages. Okay, again, you start, you grow, you level off, and then that's it. Each stage of the product life cycle is unique, yes it is, and presents specific opportunities and challenges for marketers. Because it's all different. You're all talking about your product at a different time. Maybe people know about it, maybe people don't know about it. We're going to talk about competition talking about prices all these have an impact on the product the decisions they made regarding the four p's of marketing and again we talked about the four p's being product promotion price and place depend greatly on where the product is in its life cycle of course right and if your product is declining you're not going to send a whole bunch of them out there and you're, you're probably not going to promote it just a whole lot and if you are it's going to be different right so again everything's connected 
So here's our chart. I was kind of talking to you. There's a visual aspect of looking at it. Introduction, we hit our takeoff where we start to grow, all right? And we're growing and we're growing and we're growing. And then we hit saturation, all right? We start to plateau. We start to level off in maturity, right? Everyone knows about it. And we'll talk about it at the bottom. And then we have our decline where we're going down. So introduction, low sales, high cost per customer. It's very expensive for the customer to buy it because there's not a lot of them out there. We're still trying to make a lot of money. And number three, financial losses. Yeah, we're probably still losing money because it hasn't been out there long, long. Innovative customers, those are the first people that are using our product. They're they're innovators. They're new. It's introduction. Nobody really knows about it. And the last one we have, few, if any, competitors. Right, because we hope we're having a new product. If there's something new, there's not a lot of people out there competing against it. As we grow, we hit growth. In growth, our sales are increasing. Yeah, we're making some money now. That's why we're growing. Cost per customer falls. We're making money. We don't have to charge people as much to make as much of a profit. We'll talk about that as we go. Because our profits are rising. We're making money. We're selling more units. Increasing number of customers. More people are buying our product. And since more people are buying it, oh, wait a minute. Now, more people are starting to make something very similar. There's competition in our market. Okay, we hit maturity, and that's again our peak sales. We, we've sold probably as much as we're going to um, at our at our peak. We're we're making it as fast as we can, and this is probably going to be about it. It's going to start to go down from here. Uh, cost per customer, because we have as many customers as we're ever going to have at the at one time. Our our profits are high. We're making a lot of money. We have a big market, and there's probably a lot more competitors than there was when we started. And then we hit decline. So we have falling sales. Nobody's really buying our product anymore. Cost per customer, you know, nobody's buying it. We're not trying to make a lot of money off of it anymore. So it doesn't cost a lot. So we don't have a lot of profits. Our profits are falling. Um, Customer-based contracts, people are only using it because they have to. We talk about phones have a contract. You get stuck with that. You're still using it. And number of competitors fall. Okay, and we can look at that. We talk about contracts and we'll talk about a phone. A phone does hit its introduction where everyone wants to have it. Innovative customers have it first. We look at growth. Okay, a lot of people are getting at maturity. Everybody's got it. And then decline. Well, it's declining for a lot of reasons. One of them may be because there's a new product coming out. Okay, you look at phones, there's a new phone coming out that replaces the old one. So we talk about how can you extend a product's life cycle, which is what we'd like to do. We'd like to keep it going as long as we can. Increase the number of users. More people buying it, it's going to last longer. Increase in frequency of use by current customers. We want people to use it more often. If they use it more often, maybe it'll they'll need another one to replace it because they like it so much or people are going to see them using it. There's a lot of different ways to look, but we want them using our product more. Finding new uses for the product. Well, they're they're finding something else that we didn't intend it to be for, which is great because now that brings us new audience, a new target market that we can sell to. Altering the product physically, you can make it look a little bit different. You can streamline an older design. Technically, that's not a new product. Uh, we spoke before about the change in the iPhone. Those are new products because you're changing the inside. You're changing everything about it. You're not just changing the outside color. That would be altering the product physically. We talk about supply and we'll talk about demand. We talk about supply being the quantity placed in the market. How much of something is out there? Okay. How much product is out there? We need producers because producers and supply are they're, they're, they're connected to each other. The higher the price, the higher the quantity supplied to the market. If you're willing to pay me $20 for an item that normally only goes for five and people are willing to pay 20, every business out there is going to try and make those because that's a $15 profit that they're making and they're going to make more than they normally do. So that's why they'll increase the supply if people are, the price is going up. Producers, when we talk about producers because they, they control the supply, they're making stuff. Supply more at a higher price because selling a higher quantity, which is what we talk about selling more items at a higher price, increases revenue. We've made more money. That's what they're in the business to do is make money. Next, we talk about demand. So the higher the price of a good, 
the less people will demand, the less they're going to want, have the money to spend for that good. Okay, so as prices go up, not everybody can afford it anymore. So people are going to steer away from buying it. They're going to buy something else. Or maybe they're going to buy one of the competitors because it's a little cheaper. People will not be able to afford to purchase an item if the cost is too high. So what we just talked about, it's, it's too much. I can't spend it. Now we start talking about opportunity cost. What opportunity am I giving up for that cost? The amount of a good that buyers purchase at a higher price is less because as the price of a good goes up, so does the opportunity cost of buying that good. If there's other opportunities I'd rather spend my money on. As a result, People will naturally avoid buying a product that will force them to forgo the consumption of something else they value more. We talked about this with opportunity cost, all right? I'd love to have some new shoes, but I'd also probably rather make sure my electric stays on. So that opportunity cost of buying those shoes to give up on electric, yeah, I don't really like that. I don't want to forego that. So some words we're going to talk about. Okay, we have supply and we have demand. Think of them as curves and lines, and we're going to talk about it and how they intersect. So we have a surplus. We have more supply than what we need. The next one, we have a shortage. We have more demand than what we have something available. We have a surplus. All right, now's a good time when you can see a surplus go on. After Christmas, there's a surplus of Christmas items. And what do they do? They put them on sale. Because you have to get rid of surplus. You have to sell it. Surplus sales. Okay. We have a lot of items. We just need to get rid of them. At this point in time, when you have a surplus, you're probably not going to be charging full price. This is an on sale item. Just get it and so we can get new stuff in here. We need new inventory to sell. And the opposite side of that, we have a shortage where demand exceeds supply. More people want it than there are available. So now what that creates is a market where someone's going to pay extra. Okay, I only paid $100 for it, and you want it. You can't get one. I'll sell you mine for $200. And that's how that market goes. And the last one we have. Now, you very rarely can actually hit this in the real world. Equilibrium. Our supply and our demand are the exact same. Okay, The store called and said we need seven Christmas trees, and they sold seven Christmas trees on Chris by Christmas Eve, so they're done. They don't have any surplus. Okay, That would be equilibrium. The same store, Okay, they called and said, hey, we need five Christmas trees. Well, they sold five by December the 20th. They now have a shortage because their demand, there's still people that are going to want Christmas trees, exceeded their supply, and they lost the opportunity to be able to make money. So we think about things on a graph, all right? Our supply and our demand. Supply goes up and demand is going to go down. They're opposite. Demand goes up, supply goes down. And again, we have our surplus, our shortage, and we talked about equilibrium, where things are equal.